with a smiling face, please. I want to welcome all of you this morning or this afternoon. Um, I had a baby dedication uh, in KM service, so that's the third baby in two weeks. And I was thinking, wow, you know, our church is really young. A um, couple of weeks ago, I, I met my, uh, my, my friend, Pastor, and he told me his average congre- congregation age is 65. Now, average congregation age is 65. That's old. Uh, he says he gets about one or two funerals uh, in a month. So I'm going, oh, my goodness. Uh, fortunate for us, uh, we don't do much funerals in this church, even though we have a uh, little bit elderly people, but good enough. And then we have good uh, middle-aged people, and then we have a lot of youth, and then the little... Uh, babies. It's really good that we, we are in a, I guess, a very good um, balance in our population. So I I'm really was glad uh, doing the baby dedication. So I want to recommend all of you to have more babies, <laughs> if you can. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, <laughs> we've been talking about, uh, we're talking about faith. Uh, it began uh, several months ago when uh, I start uh, telling you. Can you lower the volume just a little bit, Ted? A little bit? Okay, hello? Can you hear me in the back? Yeah, yeah okay, good. Um, well, we were uh, are talking about uh, returning to God, uh, God that made us instead of God that we made. Because many a times if we are not careful, we end up believing the God that we end up creating in our head instead of God that created us. Um, so we were saying that, you know, the essential uh, characteristic of God is love, right? Would you agree to that? God is love. Amen. Um, love is not the kind of love that we are used to or we, you know, we are familiar with. Um, the, usually people talk about love. Love is a, like a feeling, you know, when, when you touch somebody, when you uh, meet somebody on an opposite gender and you feel a little pitter-patter. Uh, we call that love. It's not love, really, if you really think about it. It's just a hormone, you know. Um, and lots of times we, we end up losing that feeling and we're, we're saying, you know, I lost that feeling, you know, so I need somebody else. No, you just, your, your hormone just wore out, you know. Uh, it's a natural feeling because if you continue to have that kind of a hormone running rampant in your blood vessel, you'd be dead in six months. You know, imagine you... You met somebody and you always feel this jittery every time, you know, and for two years you'll be dead. You know, you'll have a heart attack and, you know. Uh, that's not love. Love is an affair of will, okay? Uh, it's not the feeling. It is really an, uh, a, a, a will of a mind. Um, so I used to say, you know, to ask you, uh, I love you, but I, I stopped doing that. or I don't want to do that anymore. It, instead, we should say, I will love you, okay? So turn to each other and say that, I will love you, okay? Because, um, you know, um, I mean, many a times I tell you, oh, say I love you to your neighbor, you know? Sometimes you end up lying, you know? I don't love you, but I, I love you, you know? So uh, that's not a proper thing to do in the church, especially. So I will love you because, because love is an affair of? Will, okay? Love is patient, love is kind. All that is, is, is just an affair of will. Despite of the feeling that I have, you know, against you or for you, you know, I will care for you, I will be patient, you know, I will love you, okay? Does that make sense, right? So love is, um, is very important uh, in, in, in Christianity. Uh, in fact, love is probably the most important um, because the Bible says without love, uh, you know, reading Bible, praising, praying, you know, all that Christian activity is in vain. Um, I mean, w- w- at the beginning um, of the Christianity, I-, I was surprised, you know. I thought Christianity is all about faith, you know, faith, sola fide, you know. Uh, but I end up turning into a scripture and it says, no, no, uh, faith without love is dead, you know, it's like dead. So, oh, really? So love must be the most important thing. Amen? 
without love, really, uh, uh, whatever we do uh, is nothing. So love is very important. However, in order to love, we must have, we must have hope, okay? We must have hope. Imagine if you have somebody and, and you have no hope for that person. It'll be impossible, it'll be nearly impossible to love that person. Because once you say you are just dead and gone, then, you know, we, we can't have, you know, we can't have love. You know, we must have hope. Amen? So turn to each other and say, I have hope for you. Mm, now that's, that's really good. Because if you, I mean, if, imagine if the husband says to the wife, you know, you are hopeless. That means, you know, love is, is, is impossible. But we always ha have hope. Now in Christianity, we have two kinds of hope, right? Once we, you know, we die and we go to heaven, God will be waiting for us. Amen? I mean, I mean, you know, I just passed 61 years of age and uh, I found out a lot of things about getting old. Um, and I want to tell you, in fact, I want to order you, don't get old, okay? <laughs> you are prohibited to get old. Because uh, getting old is really not good. I mean, many things happen that you never expect. Uh, one thing I noticed is that uh, hair grows places that hair should not grow. <laughs> On top of my earlobe. Uh, why? Why? I know you don't, you don't have that, but, you know, and then I have this hair, this, this little black dot on my arm, and it produces a hair. And I will notice it after about three or four months, and like, hmm, you know. Uh, there's another thing, you know, my skin is very loose now. Uh, you know, all of you, you know, do this, and then let go, you know. When I used to do that, it made a noise, you know, a ting, you know, <laughs> ting. Now, you know, after 60 years of age, I do that, my skin goes this. Hmm. <laughs> now, some of you, you know, when you get older, when you do that, it doesn't move. <laughs> uh, that's really sad, you know. And then my skin peels, uh, you know, especially on my foot. It peels and peels and peels and end up doing so, some gross things. I, you know, sit there and then start... Scraping it and the, <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things that, that happen when you get old. And I notice when, you know, when you get old, it, you become a nuisance to a lot of people. You know, pastor, don't do that. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah. um, but no matter. When we get old and we go to heaven, guess what? God is waiting for us. Amen. And even the better news is when I go to heaven, no more hair will grow on my earlobe. I will have a perfect body. Hallelujah. Amen? And that's one of the hope. The other hope is that even while we're living on this earth, even if the environment or situation is so bleak that you think it's hopeless, no, it's not hopeless. Amen? Turn to each other and say, you are not hopeless. Mm. All, we always have this chance of getting better. Amen? 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 One more time, turn to each other and say, you are not hopeless, okay? Mm. However, in order to have hope, guess what we have to have? Faith, right? We have to have faith. Why? Because, you know, faith kind of produces the hope. Because without faith, you know, faith also is an affair of will, right? Inside of your mind, the churning says, I, I have, you know, faith that you will get better. That's called trust. I mean, faith is like trusting, okay? Especially in Christianity, we trust in Jesus. Amen? We trust in Jesus. Why? Because if we trust in Jesus, He takes care of us. Amen? We don't have to look for all kind of little, you know, small letters. God will take care of us. So turn to each other and say, God will take care of you. Seriously. Not only my generation, my, you know, my descendants and my, all my neighbors, God will take care of us. So I do have hope. God will take care of us. I mean, um, you know, after the KM service, there were a whole bunch of uh, chiquitas came up. Small kids came up. Grade 1 through grade 
uh, grade five, grade five, right? And they, there were like 30 of them. And, and, you know, as I was watching them, I could see all the parents' characters. <laughs> I mean, all different kids. And I was looking at them and I was praying for them. And, and this was, I was saying, you know, God will take care of them. Life will be tough for them. I mean, you know, elementary school these days is really tough. They, they have a metal detectors now. Man, this must be really tough. High school, college, after college. But, but guess what? As long as we believe in Jesus, God will take care of them. Amen? God will take it. That's the faith in Jesus, right? However, uh, you know, faith is also a trust. Faith has a full spectrum, zero to 100, right? Zero to 100. So, you know, before 50, you are not trusting that person. You know, I give you seven, okay? And then, you know, you're not trusting that person at all, right? Uh, however, sometimes you have, you know, faith in person like 80, you know, I trust you, you know, I believe in you. Good. Uh, however, that faith also fluctuates, fluctuates, goes up and down, up and down. So uh, to me, it really doesn't matter where you start, you know. Uh, sometimes people will begin at faith or trusting level of seven or eight, but then they gradually get better. Or sometimes they start at 90 and then gradually go down. So it has an either upslope or downslope. So I want you to look at the person sitting next to you silently. Are we going down or going up? Uh, that's very important. Okay? It really doesn't matter where you start. But if, you, if your relationship is going up, uptrend, that's good. Congratulations. But if it is going down, you know, that's sad. Okay? We, we must improve our situation. Amen? I know. Because it is an affair of a will, it goes up and down, up and down. But in an average, you know, goes up and down and, and goes up, or goes up and down and goes down. Now, if it goes down, then that's no good. But, you know, it, goes, it should go up. And then the question is, how does our faith go up? And that was the topic of last week. When, when we realize something, our faith goes up. Okay? If we have same knowledge as before, our faith will, our trusting in God or our trusting in each other will not change. However, when we find something, oh, I didn't know this, and then your faith goes up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you a, a very uh, interesting story I heard yesterday from Tony. Can I share you? Yeah, you got not much choice now. <laughs> um, after the sermon last week, uh, Tony had this experience, and he shared it with us in, in our a meeting, so I want to share it because it, it is really moving and it is really interesting. Uh, as you all know, that we had a KM uh, IGL you know, a few weeks ago, and uh, Tony's parents happened to uh, you know, uh, be a, a candidate. And, you know, Tony's dad and mom are very, you know, fairly advanced in age, and they attended. And, and um, I guess uh, uh, one morning, uh, Tony saw his, his mom and dad as they are coming out of the room. And uh, Tony's dad had a little problem with uh, his throat because he had a surgery, a tracheotomy, and, and he wanted a, a, a pillow to prop up his head during the night. Uh, so uh, his, he was asking his wife, you know, Tony's mother, to get me another pillow. And Tony's mom said, um, well, if, if we get another pillow for you, somebody else will have to sleep flat, you know. And at that, uh, Tony's dad uh, became very uh, angered and, and said something uh, improper, you know, to his wife, you know. And... Tony was coming down, and he happened to witness both of them, and he saw uh, his mother's face, and uh, it was very, um, very sad, very scared, very, uh, you know, it was, it was not, it was not good. And then Tony thought, uh, you know, uh, that's my father, that's my mother, and I've been married for, you know, almost twenty years, and then. You know, I used to be like that. 
but because of God, I have changed now. And I'm so thankful. And, and looking at that situation, if I didn't know God, I'd be like that. You know, without, without really knowing that I'm hurting my wife. You know, you just hurt somebody else. But that recognition, that realizing that I made this mistake, that's such a fantastic chance or opportunity to grow your faith. Amen? Because without that, we will never be better. You know, once we realize something, once we realize, oh, I made a mistake, you know, that's when refreshing time comes. Refreshing time comes. So turn to each other and say, I made a lot of mistakes, didn't you? Oh, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we just say that, but truly, um, you know, I've been married for almost uh, 40 years now, since 1981, and I really didn't know when I was young. Um, you know, I have, a, I have this picture on my phone when I was, I think I was um, maybe tw early 20s and my wife was also uh, early 20s. And, and I look at it and, you know, me when I was 20 something years old, it's ugly with glasses like this thick and my eyes full of anger. You know, I, I could see it like, and then next to him, this gorgeous chick. <laughs> This beautiful girl, I mean, and I look at it, you know, I, I recently realized, you know, in recent years, you know, I did not know that. And I, I saw that one day and go, oh my goodness, such a utter, um, what do you call it, um, utter, uh, you know, uh, two different people, you know, one ugly, the other one beautiful. And I didn't realize that. And, and for so many years, you know, I did not realize that. But luckily, you know, recently, as I got old, you know, uh, I, one day I looked at it and go, oh, I, I, I really made a lot of mistakes. And by realizing that, we can have a time of refreshing. Amen? That's what I was trying to tell you, you know. And then somebody came up to me and asked me, Pastor Shin, that's all good and, you know, how can I do that? How can I learn more? You know, uh, you know, what do I do to learn those things? Well, answer is today's sermon. Uh, we're trying to find out, okay, how can I learn all these things that I did not realize? Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 11 through 17. Uh, some of us uh, who, who, has, who have been reading Bible, this, this story, uh, this uh, verse is not, not too unfamiliar. Uh, however, it is somewhat difficult. So let's look at together. Romans chapter 10, verses 11 through 17. Okay? As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from the hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen. Amen. I think verse 17 is really important. So let's read it together, shall we? One, one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen. Um, it says in verse 11, as the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him, Jesus, will never be put to shame. Amen. So no matter what shape we are as we get old, uh, whether we are rich or poor, old or young, you know, when we reach in heaven as a believer, Jesus is truly waiting for us. Amen. There is no shame. 
And I think all of us will be reborn with a perfect body. Hallelujah. Perfect body. Mm. I think uh, to me, perfect body is about, I don't know, six foot and two inches. 175 pounds. Is it too skinny? <laughs> too skinny? Yeah. Six to 185? Too skinny? 200? Uh, 200. 200. Running 100 meters about eight seconds. Eight seconds. Yes. <laughs> eight seconds. Yeah. Well, in heaven, maybe I will run in about 0 0.1 second. Anyways, no, no shame. Amen? Uh, and then while we are living, also, if we trust in Jesus, no shame. So imagine if you work for somebody and you made some mistake at work and, and your manager is scolding you. You know, you used to be, you know, beep, 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 in there. and you just kind of close your eyes, put your head down, but think inside. No matter what, I'm a child of God. Amen? We don't have to tell ourselves, I am useless. I am broken. You know, we don't have to say that. Okay? I am a child of God. There is no shame. Amen? The past and whatever happened in the past, once I become a child of God, there is no shame. Amen? Turn to each other and say, there is no shame. Okay? Really, there is no shame. There is. God has forgiven all the things that we have done. Amen? God has forgiven all the things. And we are a newborn child in God's eyes. Amen. Verse 12. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, richly blessing all who call on Him. Amen. So it doesn't matter whether you are Korean, uh, uh, vegetarian, <laughs> It doesn't really matter, okay? Whoever, Korean, Italian, American, Chinese, Japanese, you know, a Thai, a Vietnamese, uh, a German, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. Really, in God's eyes, we are all same. Amen? Uh, and somebody asked me, uh, but then what about the Israel, the nation of Israel? Aren't they the chosen nation? Yes, they are chosen nation. But when God chose them, they, he, God had a purpose. You know, when you choose something, you have a purpose. What was the purpose of God choosing Israel? Not to just to save them, but for them to go out and save all the nations. That was the purpose, but Israel didn't do that. I am chosen, so I am better, and you are not better. You know, Th that's what Israelites did, and that's why how they, they rejected God. But in, I, in the eyes of God, we are all same. Good looking, better looking, best looking, we are all the same. Amen? We are all same. Man, woman, child, we are all same. Educated, uneducated, rich, poor, we are all same in God's eyes. That's what he's saying. Okay? As long as we call on the name of Jesus, we will be saved. Verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in. Okay? You, obviously, you cannot believe somebody you know, you, if you have not known that person. You must know in order to believe. And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Obviously, you have to hear it and then believe it. And then experience it. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Obviously. So, I was looking for a comparison. So do you guys know King Taco? Yes. Must be famous, huh? King Taco. Have you been to King Taco? Raise your hand. Oh my goodness. Man, King Taco must be in business. Huh? Really? In our, so those of you who have never heard King Taco until this moment, uh -huh, look around. There are a couple, oh, there are a few people. Oh my goodness, you know. Okay, let me tell you about the King Taco. Uh, King Taco is a, a taco place in, huh? where is it? In L.A. Well, obviously, I have never been there. I, I ate it several times, you know, uh, because people say the King Taco is the best taco in the whole world. So, no? Uh, okay. So, anyways, uh, you know, people bought King Taco and, and bring it to me, and, and we ate together, you know, many times. But see, 
There are people in this room right this moment, they never heard King Taco before. So, you know, if they never hear it, they will never know that King Taco exists. Okay? If they, if they don't know that King Taco exists, obviously they will never, you know, believe in or think that King Taco is a, a good tasting taco. You know, whatever the you know, taste it is. You know, I mean, to me it was pretty good, but I guess, um, um, anyways, never mind. Um, so that's what, you know, that's what Bible is trying to say. You know, you know, unless you preach them and you, you hear it, you will never be able to know and believe it. Okay, verse 15. And how can they preach unless they are sent? In other words, you know, you cannot just go out and, you know, you know preach. Inside of your heart, you must have this conviction that I want to preach the word. You know, over the lunch, um, uh, Randy came up to me. Randy Young came up to me, and, and this is what he told me today, you know. Um, Pastor Shin, uh, do you have some time in, on Saturday? I go, why? And, and this is what he told me. For about three or four weeks, he's been having this conviction to preach the gospel to somebody that, that he did not talk to for about seven years. And this person happened to be, you know, um, a high school friend for a, you know for a long time ago, and then while he was attending this, this service, he just constantly, God was churning in his heart, you know, reach out to him, reach out to him, and he kind of pushed it aside. And finally, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he he called on him, and he and he visited him after finding out he was in jail. About two weeks before, Randy was convicted to. You know, give him the gospel. He, this, this friend of him that he did not talk to for almost 10 years went into jail. And then he visited, he ended up visiting him and, and he said, oh my goodness, he was having a goosebump. Why? Because nobody had visited me and, and, and I was completely forgotten by all my family, but you came to me. How? And Randy goes, I don't know. <laughs> He said, I don't know, something in me churned to come and reach out to you. That's what it is. You know, unless you are, you are sent, unless you are sent. You know? um, I know, I'm sure many of you had that experience. You, know, you have this, this yearning. You know? you should, you know, all of a sudden, this, this name pops up or the face pops up. You know? That's why a few years ago, you know, ago we we uh, started to go back to Korea, you know, because you know a lot of uh, congregation members, uh, you know, having worship service, and all of a sudden, you know, their parents' face pops up, you know, because God is convicting them, you know, reach out, I'm sending you. So we end up going to Korea, and and lo and behold, we have a church now in Korea. I mean, that's how you know the sending happens, and. What he's saying is, how can they preach unless they are sent? Okay? God will convict us. And then, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. So those are those people who bring that good news. To, I mean, imagine if you are God. The most beautiful face or most beautiful person probably is the one who's carrying this message. I know message itself is also very beautiful and, and very precious. However, you know, I often imagine if I were God and looking down and this person, you know, a daughter, son, a friend, you know, carrying this message of Jesus and, and, and trying to reach out, trying to, you know, message or trying to call and he looks down, wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be wonderful in, in the eyes of God? Looking at him, he's going, oh my goodness. I mean, God would be moved. Amen? How beautiful are they, the messengers carrying the message of gospel. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our message? We all know this passage, you know, Isaiah 53. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Problem is, messenger is sent Messenger is carrying this perfect gospel. Problem is that every time this message is given, 
it is not accepted by the receiver. I mean, um, imagine, I, I have to make a confession as a pastor. I have never had this experience, you know. Somebody invite me and, and oh, Pastor Shin, I have a friend, brother, father, mother, you know. Can you come to our house and witness to, you know. Okay, and then I go there and for two hours, you know, I witness for the gospel. And then all of a sudden, this person, you know, with eyes full of tears, you know, Pastor Shin, I believe, can you pray for me? Wouldn't that be nice? And then I put my hands and they get converted and start speaking in tongues and prophesying. And I wish I had that. Have you ever had that? It is really rare. If you really think about it, telling the gospel of good news is really difficult. I mean, the action of telling it is difficult enough, but, you know, tell it and for that person to accept that, that two, you know, lock and key and just accept and happening conversion is exceedingly difficult. I mean, imagine, forget James Shin, forget you, Isaiah having a problem. <laughs> imagine, Isaiah said, I mean, Forget the pastor, Shin, you know, whoever. If Isaiah is having, a, I mean, Isaiah is the prophet of prophets. Huh? I, I don't know how high he is in, in among the prophets, but he must be up there. But Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? I mean, that means Isaiah is also. In. So telling the message and accept it by the listener is not easy. Verse 17. Consequently, this is the conclusion. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen. However, here the key word is hearing. Hearing. Okay, hearing. Because message can be numerous. You know, uh, these days, there are a lot of messages. I mean, you open up the YouTube and look for the pastor. Ah, messages after messages come out like a you know, water fountain. I mean, there are thousands, millions of sermons. And in fact, you know, uh, I don't know who you listen to. Uh, give me the example. Who do you listen when you listen? Huh? Rick Warren. Rick Warren, yes. Great pastor. Huh? Paul Washer, Paul Washer, yeah, you got to, you know, Paul Washer, yes, <laughs> Paul Washer, yes. And then who, who else? Pastor Shin. Pastor Shin. May your descendants be <laughs> blessed. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I listen to Timothy Keller, um, you know, um, and then there are, there are, you know, there are sermons from the dead people. Huh? I mean, in the sermons, you know, C.S. Lewis, you know, all these people, I mean, you know, um, uh, Edwards, you know, I mean, there, there are so many. If you really think about it, if the faith, if, if the faith comes from the hearing the message, guess what? We must be in a serious faith. Why? Because there are so many messages. I know. One's faith has to come from hearing. Amen? However, not, you know, not equal. The amount of the hearing is equal to amount of faith. It's not. It doesn't work like that. You know? Hearing comes from, I mean, faith comes from the hearing, but it's not just a hearing. It is hearing. Do you see the difference? <laughs> huh? If we just hear, I mean, in order to hear, in order to really listen and hear and be convicted, there are some components that has to come with it. First, first of all is the real word, a good word. Amen? Not just the garbage words, but good word. Okay? Real food, spiritual food. I mean, I heard lots of times people say, oh, you know, when, when I meet so-and-so, we end up talking about these sales, you know, and these people, other people, you know, don't meet that kind of people. But imagine if you go to like a group meeting and a you know, Bible study and, and people end up talking about God. That's a good kind of meeting. Amen? So you must hear the good kind of things. 
uh, good kind of things like like C.S. Lewis, you know, uh, Timothy Keller, what is it, Rick Warren, a good kind of hearing. Amen? That has to have, you know, it, it's a one necessary component of real hearing. However, the other one is the person who speaks. You know, you have to have this person who speaks to you these good words. Amen? Turn to each other and say, do you have one? Because, because, you know, when we hear certain spiritual things from somebody, we don't like it. I mean, you all have this experience, you know. You meet this person and every other word come from the Bible. And, and you end up sick of it, you know. And, and you end up disliking the Bible words itself also, you know. I wish you don't talk, you know. Why? Because the, the being of that person does not match the the quality of these words that he's speaking. And if that has mismatch, you know, then we don't want to hear it, you know. Uh, we have to have this, this good person who speaks. We have to have this a trustworthy person that I can trust, that the uptrend person, that person, if that person speaks to me, the stuff that I need to hear, then, then our mind opens up. And then whatever I hear, I can keep it in my heart. Amen? Turn to each other one more time. Do you have one? Yeah. It's very important. Not only, not only the good words, right words has to come in, but we also have to have the person that we can trust. However, that person does not necessarily okay, be a, a better person than me. Okay? Or let me... Okay. The person who speaks the right things to me does not necessarily have to be a better person than me. Amen? Okay, let me, let me, let me le explain a little bit more. You know, like, you know, probably all of the sports people, you know, who are up there, the champions, they have coach, right? Yeah? They, you know, they coach them, you know, do this and do that, you know, they coach them. And imagine... Without coach, people cannot get better, right? Now, let me ask you this question. Who does better, the coach or the player? I mean, simple logic would tell me coach must do better than the player, thinking that since he's better, he's teaching him, right? But it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't happen that way. The player does better. Coach simply knows how to do better. Does not necessarily he does it better. He knows how to do it better. Okay? Because if coach does it better, why would he be coaching? He'd be the champion himself. But see, lots of times we think like that. You know, when we hear the good words from people, and then we don't like that person. Why? Because you are not as good as what you are saying. And then you, we have a we have you know, tendency to ignore that words. It doesn't work like that. You know? A person who tells me good things, we just accept that good things. Amen? We do not have to accept that person as he or she is. Okay? We accept the good words as it is spoken to me. That is very important to, to hear it, okay? Because, uh, you know, uh, imagine the main complaint of husbands to wife is that you don't listen to me. You don't listen to me. You know, that's the main complaint. Main complaint of wife to husband is you don't listen to me. You don't listen to me. The reason why we do that is because in our heart, we have this tendency to think that for you to tell me this, you have to be better than me. But it doesn't have to be. Okay? Good words stand by itself. Amen? So if we preach the gospel, you know, we don't have, I mean, we'd be better if we are a better person, but we don't necessarily have to become a saint. I mean, our, our striving is that we get closer to be a saint. That's good. But we don't necessarily have to be the saint. So listening 
Okay? The good words. And then a person who speaks to me the good words. Finally, lastly, the third component in order to hear and accept it and believe and realize what I did wrong is, is my own heart. Am I, am I truly be willing to learn more? Because most of the time, most of them, we are filled with one single idea. You know what that is? One single idea. I am right, you are wrong. That's all the ideas we used to have. You know? I am right, you are wrong. I'm going to teach you some lesson today. Uh, because I am right. You know, whatever I think is right. It's not. It's not. You know? The main point of a person who learns new things is that I could be wrong. So turn to each other and say this. I could be wrong. This is a profound and fundament, fundamental shift of the idea. It's called, it's called a, a paradigm shift. You know? uh, I mean, when you're young, you know, I'm right all the time. I'm right. You know? When you argue especially, I am more right than you. So we end up, you know, because I, I made, I made this, this confession many times. You know? My wife is four years younger, and somehow, me being an Asian, I had this idea that men are better than women. I, they are not, okay? They are not. But I used to have that. And so, you know, my, when my wife says something, I would get angry. And I end up having this heart, this thought in my heart. Say, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to teach you a lesson. And I confessed it many times, you know. Um, I thought I had a, I had a God-given uh, task in my life. You know what that was? To teach my wife a lesson. I mean, you know, that's a wrong. You know, that's wrong. And one day I realized, oh my goodness, my wife is another human being. You know, she has her desire, she has her feelings. I did not know that. I did not know how they feel it. You know, I did not know if I say something, how, how hurtful that is to the other person. Unless and until I really become that person. And in order to become that person is really difficult. I mean, becoming the other person is really... And, and once you become that person, you will find out totally new thing. I mean, utterly new thing. So let me do something that you may not like. Okay? Those of you who are married, I want you to take off your shoes. Give it to your spouse. And try that on. Try that on. One night... <laughs> Try that on, okay? Try that on. I know. If you're a friend, if you're sitting next to your friend, you can do that too, you know? Try to wear your dad's or your child's shoes, you know? Same thing. Isn't that a strange feeling? I mean, one night, I went out to the garage and tried to, you know, do something in, in my car, and it's only about five feet. I happened to put on my wife's shoes. And I fell. What kind of shoes is this? A little point, you know. <laughs> See, I'm a man, and I only know about men stuff. I and mean, that's obvious, you know. If I know women stuff, I'd be strange, you know. <laughs> and we forget that. We forget that. So we assume automatically that this person that I'm living with should think like me. You know, she, she should think like me. Okay? If you don't, you are wrong. Okay? Now, by realizing that fact, it's really just a turning point of a person's life. And unless and until you, you have that feeling, you know, I want to learn. I want to learn. You know, try her shoes or his shoes. You know, try to go to laundry and do this, and try to, you know, man stuff, or try to do woman stuff, or Im imagining things, you know, going through that process. Why? Because deep down, fundamentally, what I think inside is that I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong. That's a paradigm shift. That's a paradigm shift. You know, anybody who succeeds in life, anybody who succeeds, you know, they don't have this unshakable. You know, conviction that I'm going to do this. No. 
No. I mean, we must have the conviction. Yes, I believe it. I trust it. I have a vision. I have a dream. You know, I have a goal. But back in my mind, you know, whatever I do, I could be wrong. I check it, recheck it, check it, check it again, and make sure that I am not hurting anybody, that I am not, you know, stepping into somebody else's territory. I'm being very careful. And if you do that, if you do that, we get to know something that I have never known before. You know, something, oh my goodness. And once you have that, that's when you come to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I have done something wrong. So you all know my dad passed away, you know, about, about almost six, seven years ago now. I think, uh, I think about two years before he passed away, he was about 80, 82, something, something like that, a little after 80. He was a really old man. He was a really strong man for all his life. You know, he, he grew up under the uh, Japanese annexation and he went to military and all that. He's just a hard person. And he never believed in God. But, you know, lo and behold, his, his son, his younger, youngest son, his favorite son, <laughs> became a pastor. I, he went crazy. I mean, you, you know, I, I imagine if I were him, he would be really confused, you know. Why would he do that? So he ended up coming to this church, you know. Most of you, some of you know that he used to sit over there. And, and then one day, his heart changed. His heart changed. And this is what he told me. You know, in my, in my niece's wedding, he asked me, James, let's take a walk. So he's 82 years old, and, you know, I'm his younger son. So, okay, then. So we're walking. And this is what he told me. James, I found something. I said, what did you find out? And he said, you know, um, uh, for a few months I've been attending this IGM church, and I had this strange feeling. What was the feeling? He said, in me, you know, you must have something to become a pastor. So... I ended up uh, trying to read Bible. This is what he told me. Oh, yeah? So uh, what did you find out? And this is what he told me. I did not find out anything. Huh? He said, I tried to read the Bible, and it's so complicated. <laughs> There's so many stories, and, and I couldn't understand anything, so I gave up, and I, I was disappointed. Okay. <laughs> and then he told me this. But uh, I, I was looking... And I couldn't read the Bible. After about a month or so, I gave up. And then I looked at the back of the Bible. And as you all know, Korean Bible, at the back of it, there is an Apostles' Creed and Ten Commandments. So he said, I found out this Ten Commandments. Easy to read. There's only ten of them. No? So he told me, he ended up reading this Ten Commandments every morning. You know? And then about... A month later, this is what he told me. I found out that living 80-something years of my life, I broke every single commandment that God gave me. And he started crying. Isn't that a, a tremendous finding? After 80 years of hard life, you know, it's like, me, myself, and I, and believe in this and all that. One day he read the Bible. I mean, not even, not even the Bible. <laughs> Ten Commandments section, you know, at the end of the Bible. And he found out that he broke every single commandment. God only gave ten, and he broke everything. I mean, um, I, had, I always had this question. If you keep all the law, would you be able to go to heaven? That was my, you know. And there are yes and no, you know, you need Jesus and all that. You know, I know there are a lot of theological, you know, uh, arguments. But to me, it's my opinion. I think you can. You can. If you are that good person, that you, you didn't break any law, and you're just, just perfectly good person. But imagine if there is a, a person who kept all all the traffic laws all his life. 55, 55. 45, 45. 25, 25. Okay? All. 
But one day, after 40 years of driving, some emergency happened. So 45 miles on, he drove 70. Guess what usually happens when you keep the law and then you break one time? You get caught, okay? So police stopped you, give me a driver's license, and this is what you end up saying. Officer, I can show you my life, okay, if I could. All my life, I have never broken the law. 25, 35, 45, I can show you. I only broke one time. So can you give me a break? You know what policemen would say? No soup today. <laughs> it means <laughs> if you break the law one time, guess what? You are a lawbreaker. So imagine Buddha. I know Buddha is a good person. Do you think he never got angry? Never cursed anybody in his heart? I imagine so. You know, there are a lot of good people, but you can never do that. And all of us broke the law. However, when you find out what I broke and come to God, say, oh my goodness, I found out I've done this. Can you forgive me? Can you please forgive me? Well, God will say, I forgive you. And then, like the other Bible said last week, time of refreshing. I'm a born-again Christian. I'm a new person. And the relationship between me and my God, me and my family, would be much better. Amen? So, listen. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. I know it is very simple, but... If, you, if we look inside, it's rather complicated. Again, it takes three components. Number one, good words has to be spoken. Amen? So if you have a friend who gives you bad influence, don't meet up with that friend. Okay? You can always lie. Okay? Hello? Oh, Pastor Shin. Okay. See you later. You can do that. You are allowed. Okay? Hear the good words. Amen? And also, it is really good that if you have somebody who can tell you the right things. I know sometimes you want to just wring their neck, you know. Why can't you just tell me the good things? But if without that person, we'll never be able to hear the good news. Amen? Remember, that person does not have to be a saint. He does not or she does not have to be better than you. Just a good word. But that source has to be there. But finally, the third component, my heart should be ready to accept. How do I ready to accept? I always say to myself, I could be wrong. Amen? So turn to each other, finally say, I could be wrong. Or if you so desire, say, I am more wrong than you. Imagine if we have that. And uh, our lives would be much better. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for bringing all of us here. That we lived our lives such a complicated life. So many hurtful things had happened. And we come to you with broken lives. Yet we have faith in you. We have heard the good news that you are the Savior and you have, you have sacrificed yourself. And Lord, today we have heard that faith comes from the hearing of the word. Hearing is very difficult for us to do, Lord. But Lord, as we live our lives, we will try more, for I am wrong many times and come to you with contrite heart, ready to learn. And I will accept Jesus Christ as my Lord, for you have saved my soul. Thank you so much, Lord. Lord, we are about to give you our offering. May it be given unto you. 
And I pray that you would bless every single one of us. For time is difficult. Your hands be upon all of us, Lord. Thank you so much. Pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen.